Hello, Andy and Loving Souls. Welcome back to part two of the topic of communication from the universe. And we've just discussed some universal laws that are at play, in which you are welcome to view in part one if you haven't seen that already. But let's just jump straight into the practical tips as to you know what kind how can you become aware of the messages, communication from the universe in order to be able to actually receive the messages of the customer advice that you are seeking. Now, uh, just to reiterate the point that this is, um, the practical tips I'm going to be discussing are um, things that have worked out in my life, you know, things I pay attention to, and as a result, you know, I wanted to share them with the world. So, uh, take it as it comes, take it as what resonates with you, um, any of these practical tips and also if there's anything here that I haven't mentioned but something that applies to you or works for you in terms of your um, receipt of communication from the universe make sure you comment them down below because I'm sure the community would be very appreciative of hearing other tips practical tips from people out there when it comes to actually receiving messages from the universe and so um, I wanted to use the framework today of going through the following, the physical, the mental, emotional and spiritual signs or aspects um, in order to sort of break it down into a variety of categories to understand or to explain how the universe may communicate with us. And as a result, um, perhaps there will be something here from each one of the categories that you might pick out that actually resonates with you or perhaps everything together might work for you and um, be like a nice beautiful puzzle piece that will hopefully make sense and it might inspire you to think differently or to try something new different or just simply become aware of something new um, in your life and realize hey that's you know the universe trying to communicate with me perhaps um, and before I kick off with the physical, just as a reminder, it's all about the giving and the receiving energy that I mentioned in part one, um, intention to actually ask, intention to refer uh, or address a particular aspect of the universe as a whole, or perhaps, you know, I usually uh, address my angels, guardian angels, my spirit guides, garden asna or my ancestors or my higher self or Gaia in the planet earth or universe as a whole so sending out that tension and you know a question or a query or something you want to find out about and ultimately receiving being attuned to then receiving the answer in whatever form it comes to me and I'm, I trust and I have faith in the fact that since I've put out that query, a question, whatever it is that I want to know, I know that the universe will communicate with me and it's just about me being aware of the fact that now I'm in the receiving mode and I trust that the answer will come to me. And usually I have a bit of like an aha moment or some kind of synchronicity that keeps on repeating and I just know in my heart and in my soul that yep, that's the answer that to the question that I have posed to the universe. Okay, so with that, let's talk about the physical category. And the physical will be broken down into the physical body and then the physical world or the external factors outside of your body. So if we talk about the physical body first, so here's some of the things I have written down and just bear with me because I do have quite a list here for a variety of categories. The first one is to notice your breathing. Are you breathing quickly and panting, you know, anxious kind of breathing, or slowly, deep breath, nice and calm? So pay attention to your breathing. Goosebumps, whenever those come through. Yawning. I, I made as recently I made a video series on yawning, and specifically that it is in my world. I think it has something to do with like a spiritual connection, or it's your spirit, your uh, soul is trying to communicate with you, so pay attention to um, when you're yawning and what were you thinking in that moment, what were you saying, or what was the context, was somebody saying anything to you at that time, so yawning is quite important. Sneezing, and because it's effectively a bodily reaction to um, some, some kind of, you know, dust or contaminant or something that's not quite right, so I bet it's a bodily reaction um, to an external factor, which irritates you. Um, any other kinds of bodily sensations, and I mean that as simple as cold or hot, or any parts of your body might feel heated up, you know, when your ears are burning, as an example. The other one is pain or physical sensation of some injury 
or you might actually have physical signs of um, an illness or a cut, you know, or you might have um, hurt a particular part of your body and it's sort of throbbing. So just pay attention to physical aspects of your body, what's working out well, what's not doing well, and you know, which area of your body that is. Just ponder on a little bit more about those organs or those parts of your body and why they might be sensing that way or why, why, why they might be feeling that way. And I'm talking about the physical pain here. Trust in your senses. So what you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you touch, and what you can taste. With the seeing eyes, obviously, there's the physical world that you can see around you, but also notice moments when your eye might be twitching, you know, and uncontrollably, sometimes that randomly just happens, right? Likewise, ear ringing, and would it be the left ear or the right? Um, what? Because in the way, it could be like some kind of message coming from your spirit guides or your angels or your higher self, and it's just a frequency of the message doesn't quite align, I guess, in a more clear, audible manner with the planet Earth frequencies when it comes to sound, but trust in the fact that the message is received by the right part of you, and it may come in a variety of thoughts or dreams or messages later on. Smelling, touching, and tasting, do you know those random moments when you might just get a whiff of something and you just know that it's just not around, but you get the smell, and it random touch or sensations, feelings, textures, as well as tastes, you know, might remind you of a particular food that you've eaten or a memory might arise in your mind just because of a particular um, taste sensation that you may have. So trust in your physical body um, telling you what, sending you a message effectively. So, so pay attention to what your physical body is uh, telling you or what kind of reaction it is having. And I see it as, you know, one way to think about it is I am a big believer that our physical body is like a piece of technology or your car that you're driving, as an example. You know, spirit is inhabiting this physical body, which is a huge and sophisticated and amazing piece of technology. And so any kind of physical sign is equivalent to your car giving you a notification that something is not quite right with it. Just as an example, if you're... Um, blinkers come on for random reason or your wipe you know wipers or a signal about the fact that you need to fill up your car or you know your tires are not quite working properly or you get random grunts or sounds or you know you press on the gas pedal and it's just not going so well or brakes are giggling up so in other words there are you know if you drive a car or your vehicle or any other piece of technology that something hasn't been maintained well or it needs extra attention or it's given you the sign that something is up likewise treat your physical body and the signs that your physical core body gives you in the same manner that something is up question it. what's going on why what's the inherent what what is it the foundation what's the cause um and once you understand and pay attention to what might be the cause, then perhaps you will be um, on the right track to figure out, you know, what's the solution, what's the outcome, what is it that you've got to do next in order to um, uh, figure out that particular aspect of your life that may need it to be addressed um, adequately and properly and effectively. And so, yeah, just pay attention to your physical body in the same way as you pay attention to your technology in the real world. Cars, laptops, phones, um, equipment, what we around your home, cameras, things like that. The next thing when it comes to the physical head category, outside of your physical body, is obviously the physical world that we're li living in. And that's the external factors that will pop up in your life. And if there is uh, something that uh, catches your eye or just resonates well, that's not knowing that, yep, aha, uh -huh, extra, you know, extra attention is paid. To a particular um, external factor or synchronicities, you know, repetition of one and the same thing over and over and over again, that's a synchronicity. If anything of this sort happens, then look into it. Perhaps there's an answer in there to the query that you post to the universe. And so here's the list, please bear with me again. Other people, that's an obvious one, right? Might be communicating or engaging with you. Be that people who you are already aware of, 
close family members, friends, colleagues, etc., uh, or somebody from the past randomly popping into your life, you know, from your childhood or uh, ex, you know, classmate or you know, uh, from your previous place of work or ex, as in, in a relationship perspective, somebody from the past. Likewise, it could be unknown new people, individuals, um, random people on the street, your neighbors, somebody you talk at the grocery store. Or you know, even if they might not be engaging with you one to one or communicating with you, you may be in a situation where you walk by a certain individual or group of people and they're conversing or having a discussion and you just hear something and it just catches you. And you just like, sometimes you just want to listen to that very really carefully and it might be just a word or a sentence or a phrase. Pay, if that happens to you, pay attention to it. Outside of people, we got the following, which is obviously perhaps music, radio, or any other kind of audible sound. Uh, pay attention to that. See what the lyrics might be selling you. What kind of songs have come through? What's the thing behind them? Is there a kind of consistency that you're paying attention to? Um, something I do is if I do actually want a particular answer or I just want to hear something I should know and I'm listening to music, I um, I refer to the Archangel for Music and Sound to send me the right songs of music my way to give me the insight as to what I should be aware of at that relevant time, just any kind of general message I should be aware of and I just trust in the right songs to come my way and the right lyrics to come my way. So the next one is books, leaflets, billboards, as well as any kinds of photos or images, because obviously our photos can sometimes be, um, you know, reflective of a thousand plus words, and so a faster way for you to process information, pay attention to that, movies, TVs, bumper stickers, I love that one, uh, notifications or pop-ups on your phone, be that through social media, whatever you might be using, as well as emails, direct messages, or just, you know, spam time related stuff, or things you've subscribed to, things you may normally delete, but then one day for some reason it catches your eye, perhaps there's something in the subject matter or in the message that really, you know, captures your attention. Next one I really enjoy, but, um, I don't know, some of you might not, but numbers, and working with numbers, you know, numerology, and as part of that, obviously, uh, numbers are all around us, dates is an example, a particular day, um, and date, sorry, has a particular frequency and energy, which is reflective of what may occur in your life on a particular day. Likewise, um, math, obviously, has a lot to do with numbers and the formulas is the math, and there's a reason why we study math ever since we're young, I think there's a lot more to it, and uh, there's, there's something about how uh, given the energy that we are, the energy field that the universe is made up of, I do inherently believe it's all kind of a code in a similar way that, you know, a computer software might be running through zeros and ones in combination of zeros and ones. There's something to our universe and the energy field which runs on a particular code. And with that, perhaps the math, you know, planet Earth, we study math that perhaps there's a answer to um, the way our universe works through math. Let's move on. Symbols, a variety of symbols can mean different things. Trust in what the various symbols or a symbol may mean to you and you can find symbols literally on images, photos all around you or cards, you know, I work with oracle cards or tarot sometimes just to give me uh, certain messages and I interpret those quite well. You might also be uh, working with other tools like runes, for example, some people are into that. Now, Mother Nature is a big one, and it's really funny because my weather has just turned and it was a randomly just really, really big storm and rain had literally come through as we we're filming. So, that's a good reminder to talk about the Mother Nature, right? Talking about trees, plants, weather phenomena, different seasons, um, each plant. Or flower or kind of tree has their own spiritual meanings there by design there's a reason for them and so when you're paying attention to a particular plant or natural phenomenon uh, if you're not aware of what it may mean I suggest googling spiritual meaning behind a particular you know plant and read read more about that just to see 
what the nature is trying to tell you, what mother nature is trying to communicate to you. Likewise, obviously, animals and insects, extension of the natural world, right? If there are certain symbols or images or actual animals, physical animals or insects that you're observing or seeing, a uh, bird might randomly fly into your home, just as an example, you know, pay attention to a bird, or perhaps if you know what kind of bird it is, there's an extra specific detail that you might want to type into your Google search engine and just find the spiritual meaning of that. And, but also trust your own intuition, what could it mean as soon as you notice you know, a bird flying around your home, just as an example. Clouds, I think clouds is a wonderful fall phenomenon, likewise in relation to clouds, rainbows, I think rainbows are magical, but we'll talk about those shortly. Um, but clouds, trust in that whatever you see up in the clouds, if you ask a particular question, you will get the visual of a cloud, you know, you will see the way you need to see it, and the picture, you know, the image, whatever it reminds you, might actually be the message itself or the answer that you're seeking. Just even if the other person disagrees with you what the particular cloud looks like, it doesn't matter. It's what you see, it's what you interpret. That's what really matters. Crystals, obviously crystals is a big one. Um, rocks, any other elements, uh, what I mean by elements, fire, water, earth, air, whatnot. So like pretty much part of nature, right? So crystals have their own meanings, they have their own energy, and they also have their own colors. So I want to talk colors as a different category. We see colors all around us. I want to bring attention once again to the rainbow. I think rainbows are just phenomenal and magical, and it's a reminder of the fact that we're all inherently light, and light simply splits into a variety of frequencies, giving us the colors that we see with the physical human eye. But every color has its own meaning or representation there's a reason why we are drawn to particular colors some colors resonate with us more than others and don't forget to read about the spiritual meaning of which one and what they could signify in your life or what it simply means to you right to trust in your own intuition and astrology and the other zodiacs i think there's something to it we are part of the bigger you know planet earth is just one of planets out of many cosmic objects and celestial bodies out there and i do think there is a something <laughs> to um studying the world of the cosmos the planets you know astrology zodiacs there's a reason for it by design and if you are you know if you even get a curiosity on that subject matter or you know quite a bit of it pay attention to it because clearly that would be one where the universe will be trying to communicate with you palmistry you know being able to read the lines on our hands i i cannot do that myself i dabbled into it when i was a really young girl but that's it was just too hard at that time but i know that are some very experienced individuals who can you know look at lines on your hands or even your feet all those can um, reveal messages or something you should be aware of if you're into that um, that's fantastic and um, comment down below if you actually know of good palmistry books or education learning resources or individuals out there now the other one I wanted to mention is our technology we are living in a digital age uh, phones laptops um, cameras TVs electronics um, wearable technology right so I um, B, attuned to a, a, what the technology um, sends to you because obviously it's all working using a code and exchange of information, you know, trying to deliver a particular message to you in order to actually make the whole thing work. So that's part of the, you know, universal communication. But also pay attention to those moments when you are potentially having a glitch or in technology or something freezes, you're trying to do something but it's not quite working out, um, your screen might freeze or, you know, you're about, just as an example, trying to buy a particular item on a online and for some reason the payment gateway doesn't work, maybe stop and pay attention and pause instead of trying to get frustrated or angry about the situation. Maybe there's something the universe is trying to communicate to you at that point in time. So just pay attention to when the technology actually glitches. And odd things. I know this is really a weird thing, but um, I describe this category as odd things. So when something happens in your life that's quite odd and you feel like 
there's a random noise or a random thing happen around you and you just know something is random and odd and your hunch, your gut feeling is telling you something that question it, ask the question. Universe, where do you train from? Um, if you hear or see or observe um, a variety of odd things, but they're like similar in that category, that is either some kind of consistency or repetition, well, that is possibly a synchronicity that the universe is trying to get your attention to pay you something, you know, pay attention to something. Um, some odd things could include um, and this this could um, touch upon other practical suggestions that I mentioned before, but things like plate, the number of plates on cars or dates, or you just might uh, pay attention to some um, random, you know, registration cards or pieces of paper on cars that just tell you that they're licensed to use the road for a particular period of time, and for some reason you might just be seeing similar numbers or similar dates and pay attention to that or you may see numbers you know addresses obviously when you're walking around your town or city uh, your village wherever you might be and if you're see, seeing similar numbers you know that obviously means that there's a numerology aspect to it as well as the physical world because you're outside and for some reason the universe is trying to communicate with you through those numbers but potentially these are just some random odd examples that can happen all things. Now, having touched on the physical category, and I am mindful that we are running out of time, but I knew right from the get-go that this was going to be a long one, but hopefully a useful one. And if so, if you're getting any value from this video series, I would really appreciate it if you commented with V or an emoji with two fingers down in the comments below. It would be really appreciated. Now let's jump into mental, and I promise this is going to be a little bit less than the physical signs. With the mental, so this is our mind, obviously brain as an organ is obviously a physical uh, part of us, but I really wanted to talk more than just about the brain, I think the power of our mind, and specifically that it's kind of like a you know, radio antenna, it's there to pick up on signals from the universe, and hence why you get random thoughts and ideas, so here's some examples of what you might be picking up on, as I said, thoughts, ideas, phrases, phrases that may be in a different language or phrases that you do not commonly say yourself. Um, it might just come across and you just know that that sounded like a particular person that you have known of or may have already you know, passed away or it's just something that is not what you commonly say or custom to say. Phrases, images, so like actual visualizations of um, images or symbols or um, little snapshots of like mini movies or mini films, you know, like it's, it's an actual play out of a variety of images put together, variety of scenarios, um, and most importantly about all of these, what I've noticed in my life is that they are not forced, as in you're not actively creating them in your mind, you're not actively forcing them to occur in your mind, they just pop out out of the nowhere, out of the blue. So in particular, when that happens, when it's not forced, it just kind of happens. Pay attention to that because I do think that's, you know, your brain or your mind as, an, uh, as a feature of our bodies um, as picking up on a particular signal or particular frequency from the universe, from the energy that you're in to give you the answer or something that you, may sh you should know or a piece of information that you should be aware of to, you know, in, in connection with the question or query that you post to the universe. And the other two under the mental category, it's daydreams, but once again, it's not trying to force it, but when you let your mind wander, pay attention to where it goes. And it's, I think it's a good question to ask why, why did my mind go there? Sort of what was the pattern to get me from A to Z? And memories. So I do think there is something amazing about our memories. For some reason, we can't recollect every single memory since you were born, right? But for some reason, some memories really come through strongly. Um, question why? Also, those memories which 
you perhaps haven't thought of in a very long time and then for some reason you get this really crystal clear memory of a particular moment in your life or person or a clothing item or a tool that or activity you used to do anything that just pops into your mind it's actually a memory then you've lived through it but for some reason you didn't think about that before you didn't even think you couldn't even recall it before but at a particular point in time it just comes on really strongly pay attention to those and ask yourself why why did that come at that point in time let's jump into the emotional category okay team so the emotional side of things i think there's a reason why we have feelings and emotions they're also signals very strong signals by design for ourselves when we're having this um, human experience they're strong signals to be able to actually um, direct you through the lifetime and the questions that you should be posing to yourself are the following what are your emotions and feelings Obviously, during throughout the 24-hour period of your day, you will be experiencing a variety of emotions and feelings. So pay attention, become aware of what those emotions are, find a word to describe your emotion. And where do you sense it, i.e. which part of your body is it coming from? So it's, it's sort of um, also works in conjunction with the physical category that I mentioned, but more pain, but understanding or trying to become aware of the emotion the feelings that you are going through and finding a word to it for it or words to describe the emotion or feeling and where in the physical body are you sensing it as an example there's a reason for instance whenever you may have experienced a breakup in your relationship you know partner uh, spouse boyfriends girlfriends or friendship it can really hurt your heart like a heartbreak and you can literally physically sense it in your heart that's what I'm really talking about. So you know you're feeling, you know, uh, heartbroken, disappointed, upset, sad, and it feels around your heart. You know, that's that's what I'm really trying to get at. Where where do you sense it really? And uh, I put the emotions and feelings into kind of two categories. That's just me, and it's usually because of feeling, you know, fearful or negative or because of something is loving coming from a place of love so the duality that i that works for me anyway it's thinking about my emotions and feelings from like a love perspective or fear and loving means positive and uh, fearful means negative in my world and and that's how it just helped me identify you know what's going on in my life so on the fearful side or the negative side there's a lot more emotions. Here's just a list of some things that, or some words that you may want to use. Um, angry, annoyed, sad, disconnected, feeling fear, fragile, vulnerable, embarrassed, pessimistic, unsettled, tense, stressed, depressed, um, dis feeling discomfort or dis-ease. On the loving side or positive side, might be feeling accepting, open, joyful, courageous, powerful, empowered, connected, loving, curious, grateful, optimistic, hopeful, excited, comfortable, peaceful, harmonious, healed or healing, and purified or purification. So obviously a bunch of words there and there's a lot more to describe feelings and emotions and i try whenever i am becoming aware of my emotions i can put a word to it i then go and ask myself as to why would i be feeling such and such what is the true cause and it's inherent and fundamental for you to be honest and transparent with yourself nobody else needs to know what the true a reason or reasons behind a particular emotion or feeling might be have a variety have a think about the quadrant that we're talking about here today you know the physical the mental emotional and the spiritual side is there something in those buckets in your life that is making you feel the way you do you should be open and transparent with you and trust in your own intuition and what resonates with you in order to give you the right answer or insight 
to actually delve into a particular situation, a set of circumstances, and to understand some more information about where things are coming from and what is truly going on. So we've talked about the physical body, the physical external factors, the mental state, emotional state. Let's just jump into the spiritual side of things, and it's the last category for part two. So sometimes you just have this inner knowing, and I do as well, inner knowing. I don't know where it's coming from, I just know it as if it's the truth. Pay attention to your heart organ. So I appreciate this is to do perhaps with the physical, so heart is a physical organ, emotional side, you know, loving. But more importantly, in my world, heart is the bridge between your physical body and your spiritual body. And so for me, if I literally physically put my hand on my heart and I ask the question and I listen to my heart, actually like direct attention to my heart, I feel like I'm getting truthful answers and responses that I need to hear at that point in time when I ask the question and it may come through as an inner knowing or inner voice or my intuition or that gut feeling as well. Any of those, pay attention to them. There's obviously something to it. Likewise, um, chakras. So when I mentioned before about paying attention to your physical body and sensations, um, it uh, also helpful to us to understand kind of which area of your body is it actually down below next to your feet or in your head or just above your head or in your heart. I know it's a bit of a weird way to think about it, but pay attention to the location of the sensation or intuitively where you think it's trying to show you or trying to resonate with you or for you. Because... There might be an answer using the tool of the chakras, which might be helpful. So um, have a look at my sleep time healing um, chakras video series if you haven't already. I delved into chakras a little bit more in that video series. But effectively, you know, there's this framework of using the seven chakras, which represent, you know, like rainbow colors, seven rainbow colors. And each one of the chakras um, going from the root chakra all the way to the crown chakra, each one represents a particular aspect of your life. There's something that they stand for, they're representative of a particular thing. As an example, the throat chakra, color blue, could be a lot to do with your physical throat or your communication, expression, uh, your voice, um, freedom of your voice, you know, self expression, things like that. And as an example, so as a result, if you can pinpoint the location of a particular physical sensation or intern internal intuitive and the knowing and you just know the location of where it might be, have a look at the seven chakras, which one of those is it most likely to resonate with. Or if there's a particular color that keeps pop popping up, as an example, blue, and perhaps it is something to do with the throat. If it's to do, if you're seeing a lot of red as an example, and you know it's all around your, you know, bottom of the spine, just as an example, or down below, and it could be to do with your root chakra, which is um, all about foundation, um, wealth, stability, 3D world, etc. So that's, that might be an interesting tool that you can use to your advantage. Now, the last few bits I had here is uh, night dreams. Okay, so on the spiritual side of things, I think our spirit wanders and has amazing insight during the time when our physical body is at its rest and when it's sleeping. So pay attention to your night dreams. Have a journal, jot things down. Uh, pay attention to the words you use to describe how you felt, what you said, who you saw, because I do think that night dreams are kind of tapping into our subconscious, our spirit as well. And the symbols that you get are exactly custom made for you and it's sort of like a language uh, that is trying to uh, be personalized and custom to you. So sometimes writing it down really helps. Paying attention to how you felt and what you just knew and also pay attention to why I'm a big um, proponent on this communication is that in the real world in planet Earth, you know, you're understanding me through my sounds, through the words that I am relaying. But I think inherently our spirits are very telepathic. We can communicate without words. And our nut dreams are a really good example of that because it's very rare that you actually hear words. 
you just know you have this inner knowing of a dialogue, a conversation, if there are people in your night dream. So communication is telepathic, because on a spiritual level we te communicate telepathically because of that one energy field that we are all in. And another example, apart from the night dreams, I think of this telepathic communication is actually how well we communicate um, with babies, especially moms and dads and babies that are just born, right? Being able to communicate and as a result, um, just have this knowing about what your baby might need or might require. Um, obviously, babies can't speak. They don't use words when they're young, very young. Yet, moms and dads and the other family members or friends simply know. And for me, that's telepathic communication. And it comes from the fact that we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And spirits are very accustomed to telepathic communication. Likewise, think of your pets. Or sometimes you just know what they want. You just know. Yet you're not using their words. Or the other example, actually, even between humans, um, speaking completely different language, you know, um, somehow you can just communicate. You may have had that happen to you in your life. So comment down below, share your story. That would be helpful to know elements or aspects of, you know, telepathic communication when, um, you might be completely speaking a different language with another person. And just like with the emotional category, um, I mentioned that, you know, I sort of divide things into a fear, this love duality, just to kind of make it a little bit clearer for me. Um, is it coming from fear? Or is it coming from love? I genuinely think that with any kind of spiritual messages or in the knowing intuition, it also is helpful in my life anyway to distinguish or divide things into what is coming from like a fear-based situation or scenario or loving. And a lot of the time, anything that comes from my spirit or my soul that in the voice, it is very much loving, I would say, because we are all inherently loving souls. But sometimes our mind can intervene or brain can intervene in order to preserve the status quo preserve and protect you because that's kind of the role of our mind is to preserve to protect um like quite like you know think about the word conservative perhaps um not that it's a bad thing but that is wrong that's that is its role inherently and so just thinking a little bit more about fear versus love for me when it's, i know something is coming from a place of fear is because i am thinking more about like a lack mentality or scarcity mentality is that I'm not having enough of something or I need more of something whereas if I'm talking about love I just know it's more like I am abundant I am full I'm complete I am whole I'm enough and just just some couple of examples there for you to be able to distinguish those two or well, that's what i use anywhere in my life to be able to really knock it down you know really be open and transparent with myself you know is it coming from a place of lack scarcity fear or is something coming from love um example of social media um in my life i wanted to actually um relay perhaps to try and explain this love this fear situation so um, I want to say a year and a half to two years ago I went through this moment in my life where I just wasn't happy with my own attachment to my social media and I knew it was actually more harmful to me than doing good and I mean like things like Instagram and Facebook and whatnot and I just knew that I needed to experiment with myself detaching myself from social media and I recall when I was trying to think about this and figuring out a way forward for myself I had a lot of thoughts and inner strong feelings come through as well um, of trying to take me away from that line of thinking by and it was really like slamming me with things like well how else are you going to communicate with your dear friends and family um, how else are you going to find out with what's going on in your friends lives how else are you going to hear about the latest, you know, news updates or whatnot it might be. And so I've had all these things that come to me which I thought were genuine reasons. But then the more I thought about them, I realized they were actually coming from a place of fear. That was like my ego talking, trying to preserve the status quo of me being on social media because that has become a bit of a habit or attachment in my life. Um, but the more I 
thought about and realized, no, that's coming from fear, and it's more like egoistic thinking, it's my habits, it's my attachments, rather than inherently what my inner voice, the loving, quiet voice was telling me that is doing me more harm than good, and in fact, it will be harder for me to, um, it will be harder for me to detach, the process of detachment will not be easy, but I knew that there was going to be light at the end of the tunnel, like I just inherently knew that there will be more light at the end of the tunnel, I'll feel more freer, there'll be more time on my hands, less bombardment of information and news and whatnot, and in fact, uh, the way I tackled it, or that question, was by ensuring that any time I had a fear-based thought come into my mind, as an example, you know, how are you going to communicate with your friends, you know, your messenger is, you know, the best thing you do, or use, well, I tackled it by thinking there are other ways I can communicate with the friends that I actually am really good friends with, phone, text message, literally pick up a phone call, phone and call them, family, the same part issue there, and likewise, with Messenger, I could still retain Messenger, but not have Facebook app, for instance, um, so that I don't have to scroll through social media. Likewise, um, with the you know news articles, for instance, I usually use you know my Facebook feed as a source of my news. Well, I could find news using other apps or listening to radio, or TV, or whatnot. So I just simply figured out that for each one of the fear-based thoughts. I put my, you know, listen to my heart or figure out a way to tackle and address that issue and conquer the fear through that process effectively. And I did, I, I think I stopped, um, I deactivated, I remember my Instagram and Facebook for about a year and a year, year and a half, I would say. I'm back on it now for uh, like business reasons, a little bit of personal reasons. But I do not have, wholeheartedly, I do not have the same attachment as I used to. And in fact, I actually have really healthy boundaries now when it comes to my use of social media. And I feel like I have grown as a result of that as an individual. I learned how to understand what fear versus love means and how to deal with it, how to conquer it, and ultimately come out at, with a, in a bit of a life experience in sharing it with you now. And hopefully that inspires you or you know gives you a bit of an insight into something that has happened to me and you might be able to use that similar um, framework to assist you in whatever it is that you might need a little bit of guidance in. And yes, so with that in mind, ultimately we talked about once again the physical, the mental, the emotional and the spiritual framework as to how you might be able to receive communication from the universe, physical body, external factors of the physical world, mental state, your emotions and feelings, which are also very strong signals, and then your spiritual side of you, tap, tap into your heart, your inner voice, your inner knowing, your intuition, night dreams as an example, or chakras, the example that I gave. Is it coming from a place of fear, or fear of, or place of love? And, you know, really dig into the fear and the love, just to be comfortable that something is actually coming from a place of love or fear and having a clear distinction between those two and ultimately trust what resonates with you, trust what feels right, trust in um, what is coming your way, even if for some reason it might not be the same message if another individual was in your place. Just like I gave an example with the clouds, right? If you're looking at the same cloud but another person sees something else, trust in what you see. That's your custom-made message that you are meant to receive given what you see in the cloud, just as an example. And dig deeper. Why? What's the cause? Where is this coming from? What does it mean? All those questions, I think, are very helpful and will most likely have the answer that you are seeking from the universe. Alright, your team. On that note, part two is over. I do appreciate this was probably the longest part two I've ever done, but I just really wanted to get it all out into one video series. Let's just jump into part three, where we're going to receive some messages from the spirit world, actually using a couple of my uh, uh, oracle cards and a deck, and we shall see where it takes us. Click on the link down below for part three, and I'll see you shortly in part three.